Praise the mighty Yah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yah. Yah is righteous. Yah is holy. And let Yahweh be magnified. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Welcome to another beautiful broadcast of Gather Yah Saints. I am Moray Isha Yisrael from the house of Yisrael of the world in gathering of the children of Israel, here to bring you the word of Yah, so that we may gather Yah saints together, those that have made a covenant unto Yah by sacrifice. And we're going to magnify Yahweh with you and exalt his name together. This is what we will do for the mighty Yah today. And we're going to deal with this occasion that we just had in the United States, a occasion that has been given by the government of the United States, in which it is supposed to commemorate the freedom and the end of slavery among the black people in the U.S. And we're going to talk about who freed the slaves. We're going to deal with this today on Gather Your Saints. I apologize that we were not able to deal with it yesterday but our time just, my time just wouldn't permit it. And we had to postpone it to today. But if you have any questions about what we're dealing with today or any comments, you could join us in the chat. We're going live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and our website, Gather Ya Saints. Dot .org So we're on all these channels and all of them have a chat and you can input your questions or comments in any of them. But today we're going to deal with who freed the slaves? Who let us free? Are we to accept this holiday called Juneteenth now that it's a national occasion? Black people have been 
commemorating Juneteenth for a very long time. But now the United States government has acknowledged it as a commemorable day and has ordered banks, schools, post offices, and all federal operations to cease from their work on Juneteenth. So we can remember that we black people were free from chattel slavery. This Juneteenth event happened in the year 1865, according to the history books. According to other sources, it happened in 1866. But between 1865 and 1866, June 19th, which is the date that has been given, apparently there were still blacks on the plantation working and toiling as if the Civil War had never happened and as if these Northern or the Union Army did not defeat the Confederates. As if the so-called Emancipation Proclamation had not even went into effect. And they said, you're free to go. You're no longer a slave. So what happened? The Emancipation Proclamation that the President of the United States of America signed into law in 1863 was only for the states in rebellion against the Union. What does that mean? That means if you were any of the states of the Confederacy, a president that wasn't even your president at the time, made it a proclamation that the slaves, the chattel slaves, were no longer slaves. What this means is this is like the president today saying all of the slaves in Canada are free. Canada has its own government. Canada has its own military. Canada has its own laws. And Canada has no reason to listen to what the president declares for Canada's property citizens and concerns, they have no reason to listen to that. Therefore, what reason did the Confederate States of America have to listen to Abraham Lincoln? None. So it was a rootless declaration, one that would only be in effect if the, Uni the Union was able to take over the territory in which it did. Then they can declare the black people to be gone, gone free, or at least to not be chattel slaves. So essentially, nothing happened when Abraham Lincoln made this declaration. Nothing happened at all. Whatever you learned in the history books and in the movies, that didn't happen. Nobody went around saying you're free now because they didn't get the message. This is why Juneteenth was even something that happened, because they didn't get the message. And when they got the message, it was two and a half years or three and a half years later. 
so once they got the message, what were they able to do? Of course, the history of our people in this place called North America, we were brought over here in slave ships. And in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it says in verse 68, it says, and Yahweh shall bring you into Egypt. Again, what is Egypt? The word Egypt comes from the Hebrew word Mitzrayim, which means bondage. The name of Mitzrayim means bondage. So when he said, I'm going to bring you into Egypt, I'm going to bring you into bondage again with ships. Yes, what are these ships? These ships that I'm bringing you into bondage with are boats, a navy, a navy. So I'm going to bring you into bondage again with a navy, which is a collection of oh, seafaring machines. I'm going to bring you into bondage again, Misraim, Egypt, with ships. By the way, where have I spake unto you that you shall see no more again? And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Which means no man will redeem you because that is the way of our culture. If somebody has sold themselves unto servitude, your family can come and buy you out. It's law. But no one would do that with us, is what Yah said. And this is what happened with our people in North America, Central America, South America. We were brought into bondage and the islands and into Asia, East Asia, West Asia, as you know it, Australia and the islands and into Europe. We were scattered amongst the four corners of the earth. As it says in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, Verse 64, and Yah shall scatter you among the, all the people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there you shall serve other deities which neither you nor your fathers have known even wood and stone. And among these nations you shall find no ease, neither shall your soul or your foot have rest but Yah shall, set, shall give you there a trembling heart and a failing of eyes and a sorrow of mind. This is what happened. Juneteenth in the declaration or proclamation of uh, emancipation are all facades because when the Union Army came onto the property of the Southern people. They said, you're free. Free for what? Free to fight in the Union Army. Free to go up to Northern United States and be a servant for the oppressor in the north and get paid a little bit better and have the opportunity to live 
in an apartment or house that you can afford with the money you get, which is not going to be a lot. And you're going to have to serve white people still. So there was no actual return. There was no repatriation. The people that took us from our homelands did not have a Navy ready on the coast to return us to our homelands. They didn't give us our registers. They didn't give us all the records that they put down and where they got so-and-so from and so-and-so from. They didn't hand us the records. They didn't give us reparations. If you look in the book of Ezra, the first chapter, for instance, you'll see a time when we were released from bondage. In the book of Ezra, the children of Israel were released from bondage in the first chapter, the first verse, it says, Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of Yah by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. And Yah stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing. Something like the Emancipation Proclamation. But let's see what is the difference between this proclamation and the one that they say we received. So in this proclamation, thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, Yah Elohim of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem which is in Yehuda, who is there among all his people? His Elohim be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Yehuda, and build the house of Yah Elohim of Yisrael. He is the Elohim, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts besides the free will offering for the house of Elohim that is in Jerusalem. Do you know what this proclamation is stating? It's not stating that you can go fight for the Union Army, that you can go fight for the triumph of the Union Army against the Confederate Army. It's not saying that you can go be a factory worker or a farmer in the Northern lands. Or you, no, it's not saying that at all. It's saying go home. And all the people that are around you, where you sojourn, they're charged to give you silver and gold, cattle, and goods, which is called reparations. See, this is an actual proclamation of emancipation that includes repatriation, and reparations. That's what this all includes. But you didn't see that in 1863, nor did you see that in 1865 or 1866 or 2019 or 2020. Or 21 or 22 or 23 or 24. All we get are proclamations of evaporation because it's just a bunch of hot air being blown but this here is freedom to return to your homeland so let's look 
in the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, we'll read in chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, it says in verse 29, it states, and it came to pass that at midnight Yah smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moshe in Aharon by night and said, rise up, get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve Yah as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as you have said and be gone and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, we all be dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moshe. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot, about 600,000 foot on foot, that were men besides children. What you see here is another example of us being released from bondage being released, allowed to go away, and being given reparations. Who did all of this? This is all done by Yahweh. He brought Egypt down to its knees, and he made Cyrus free the Hebrews. This was done by the word of Yah. So today, who has done this? No one has done this. And the reason it hasn't happened is because the heathen refuse to hearken to the word of Yah. Therefore, he has already put in motion what he said he would put in motion in order to allow this actual freedom to happen. And what is that that he's already put into motion? Look in the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter, and you're going to see what the creator said about this particular captivity and how he would end this captivity and how he would rescue the Hebrews from this captivity. In Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 13th verse, it says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Now, I know a lot of people want that to be the very last day in the very last moment, in the very last hour that you are under this place because he said you will serve them and be afflicted of them for 400 years. And unlike Persia, it wasn't the exact 
end when we come out. He gave you something else to look at. In the 14th verse, he says, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. See, if we was to come out right after the 400 years, it would say, and they shall come out. Or it might say, and they shall be released the self same day. But it says, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. What does that mean? That means the Almighty is going to bring his determinations upon the nation that you serve. The things that are determined to happen to the nation that you serve, he will bring upon them. And what are the things that he judged this nation with? I'll show you a glimpse, but we're not finished reading this. Here's a glimpse in the book of Jeremiah. And we'll go to the 51st chapter. And it says in verse 1, Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. And I and will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. And against him that lifteth himself up against, up in his br brigaline, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her hosts. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Yisrael hath not been forsaken, for Yehuda of his, nor Yehuda of his Elohim, of Yah of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Yisrael. Flee ye out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver ye every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon has been a golden cup in Yahweh's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take balm for her pain? If so, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go everyone into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even unto the skies. Yahweh hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of Yahweh our Elohim. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. Yah hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon, to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of Yahweh the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For Yahweh hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwelleth upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come in the measure of thy covetousness. Yahweh of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely, I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings rain and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image 
for his molten image is falsehood and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, the work of errors, in the time of their visitation, they shall perish. The portion of Yaakov is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Yisrael is the rod of his inheritance. Yahweh of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. So the Babylon that Yah's talking about is this nation, and he's going to bring them down. And he's already began this thing by having all the nations round about put their cells against Babylon. And this judgment that Yah is bringing will do exactly what he said in Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 14th verse. He said, I will judge. But then what does he say? And afterward, so you're going to be able to see the judgment. You're going to see it. Isn't that righteous to be able to see the judgment that the Most High brings upon the people that afflicted you and oppressed you and destroyed you? Isn't that a righteous thing that you're able to see this judgment? And afterward... They shall come out with great substance, just like when we came out of Persia, just like when we came out of Egypt. And when you see this thing happen, you'll know Yah's word has never came back void. What does that mean? That means that the 400 years is and was a sign. It was a sign of time until the nation will be judged. A sign of time of your affliction and servitude before he starts judging this nation. And now, when Yah has started to judge the nation, it's the time for his people to really strap on and return, buckle down and return to the Most High because he has a judgment spirit in the earth now. And now he's looking. He's seeing who acknowledges this word. Who's acknowledging this truth? Because he's taking care of the nation. They're being judged. They're being judged on all sides. But when he finishes this judgment, this is what you'll see. You're not going to see the oppressor give you a day to have a cookout. That's not going to be the sign of your deliverance. Oh, now you got a day to cook out. Call it Juneteenth and you could go cook out. No, this is not going to be that day. This is what it's going to look like when we are coming out with great substance. So you can understand that these ornamental days and ornamental things that your oppressor is doing, he's doing it to distract you. Give him a holiday. Give him a history month. History Week. Name a, a, a day after one of their leaders that we assassinated. Give them a, a, a stimulus check. But we're not going to free them. We want them. We, we, we 
want to keep hold to them. We're not going to send them back. That's because Yah is going to make you send us back. That's part of the judgment. It's what it says in Isaiah, the 60th chapter. In verse 1, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of Yah has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. For Yah shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. And the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to you. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then you shall see and flow together, and your heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. Because when we return, we're going to come off of those ships that drop us back to our shores with an abundance of treasure. We're going to land with treasure for days. The abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto you. The multitude of camels shall cover you. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of Yahweh. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto you. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Because we're going to be coming on airplanes. We're going to be coming in ships. We're going to be coming on camels. We're going to be coming in horses and vehicles. We're going to come on all modes of transportation, surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them unto the name of Yah thy Elohim and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. When, when this so-called continent of Africa sees their sons and daughters Coming home, there ain't going to be no bricks. There ain't going to be no U.S. dollar. There ain't going to be no euro that can stand against our treasures. All the forces will be with us. It says in verse 10, And the sons of strangers shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister unto you. For in my wrath I smote you, but in my favor have I had mercy on you. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. The men may bring unto you forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and the kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto you the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted you shall come bending unto you. And all they that despised you shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet. And they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went un through thee, I will make thee an external excellency, a joy of many generations. You shall suck also the milk of the Gentiles and shall suck the breast of kings, and you shall know that I, Yah, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the mighty one of Yahweh. For brass I will bring gold, 
For iron I will bring silver, and for wood, brass, and for stones, iron, I will also make thy officers peace, and thine exactors righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but you shall call your walls salvation, and your gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but Yahweh shall be unto you an everlasting light, and thy God Elohim, thy glory. This is what the Almighty is going to have done, and you ain't going to have to go back to work after this holiday it's for your oppressor. Your oppressor knows this is the end of his story. And they're trying to milk every drop out of you right now. They're giving you Juneteenth. They'll give you whatever. Just don't go. Just don't go home. And there's nothing they're going to be able to do to stop us from going home. They're going to tell us to leave. They're going to say, go. Go. And bless us also. Because Yahweh is going to bring your oppressors to their knees. So that they will give up all of his people that are scattered in the four corners of the earth. They're going to give them up and return to our land. Return to our coast. And then he's going to bring us to our borders. That's right. The Most High is going to bring us home. He's going to be the one that frees us. You haven't been a chattel slave in America for a while now. But the Most High wants you and I... He wants us to stop depending on our oppressors. You celebrate a Juneteenth because your oppressor gave you a day? Stop depending on your oppressor. This is what the Almighty wants you to do. In Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, verse 1, he wants you to wake up, awake, awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. You haven't been a chattel slave since 1865. But what have you been doing since chattel slavery? What have you been doing since colonization? What have you been doing since the colonizer left and gave you back your government and gave you the right to vote? What have you been doing since your oppressor gave you the freedom to go to whatever school you want to go to? Gave you the freedom to have a passport to travel to whatever country you want to travel to. What have we been doing as a people? Yah said, wake up. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Yerushalom. See, this message that's been in this book since before we went into Babylon. Hasn't spoke to you unless you looked for it. Once you look for it, once you find it, once you hear that he's telling you to wake up and put on strength, Zion, and put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, For henceforth there shall no more come into you the uncircumcised and unclean. Wake up and circumcise your heart, circumcise your mind, 
and your flesh, wake up and separate yourself from the unclean. Verse 2, shake yourself from the dust. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose yourself from the band of your neck because he already allowed the oppressor to end chattel slavery. He allowed the oppressor to end Jim Crow. He allowed the oppressor to end apartheid and end colonization. And why? Because he already knew that by the time 400 years would transpire, you would be completely cut off. It took 400 years of absolute terror to take your mind from the most high. 400 years of terror in, in, in utter mayhem in senseless genocidal murder. After 400 years of this type of condition, you don't even want to look in the Bible. You don't even want to look at the scriptures. You just want to have a gold chain and look like some Egyptian carving on a wall. You don't even, you just want to feel good. But Yahweh is telling you to wake up. Loose the bands off your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith Yahweh, you sold yourselves for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus saith Yah Elohim, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause, now, therefore, what have I here, saith Yah, that my people is taken away for nothing? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith Yahweh, and my name is continually blasphemed. The Most High wants you to wake up from this condition. And he wants you to return to your original estate spiritually and in your heart because your body is free. Your body has been free. But he knew that your mind, he knew your spirit, he knew your heart was going to be locked down because he put this on us for 400 years generational oppression written in your DNA as they say that's why it says in the book of Ezekiel and this is the last scripture I'll read in the book of Ezekiel the 37th chapter the first verse it says the hand of Yahweh was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yah and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, there were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, and, O Yah, the Elohim, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded, 
And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, and there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophecy unto the wind, prophecy, son of man, and say unto the wind, Thus saith Yah Elohim, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. And that's what 400 years did. Dried you up. Took away your hope. And cut you off. Therefore prophesy unto them and say. Thus saith Yah Elohim. Behold O my people. I. Who's I? It ain't JC. It ain't Muhammad. It ain't Barack Obama. It ain't Trump and it ain't Biden. Who is this I? It's Yahweh. I will open your graves. Because that's where we're at. In the cemeteries. And cause you to come up out of your graves. And bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, saith Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh will be the one to free us. We already physically free to go and do whatever. But we have to wake up and let go of all this oppressor doctrine. Let go of all this oppressor doctrine. Give it back to him. Give it back to the slave master. Give it back to the colonizer. Give it back to the preacher. Give it back to the bishop. Give it back to the imam. Give it back to the, the monk. And take Yah's word and put on our beautiful Garments, giving all praises and glory and honor unto the mighty Yah, the creator of the heaven, earth, and sea, and all that therein is, by saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yah. Yah is righteous, Yah is holy, and let Yahweh be magnified. And we will join you again on the holy Shabbat day to bring you Yah's word once again. But until then, Yahweh loves you very much, and so do I. And make sure you go to our page, gatheryahsaints.org. Go to our YouTube, go to our Facebook, go to our Twitter, go to our Instagram. Subscribe, like, and share on the page. Let your people know and continue to praise the mighty Yah. Hallelujah.
been told from the days of ancient new fangles don't make sense like talking gender replacement servants not slaves indigenous not chattel we win in wars they still fighting these battles i'm a shepherd leading cattle speak truth talk factual move tactical i think practical crying to y'all the only thing left that's actual y'all's love is unbreakable yet we act like it's simply contractual because our heart is contractable i hope we crying to y'all because i'm feeling to return back to you Never forgot 12 marks on his hand we engraved but they looking for the easy ways and smooth words how we love the profit for profit all of them out for their own game the concerns with the shame and how we blaspheme the name y'all gonna send out the flame chariots and malachim all he desires is that we cry to him since he's our father let's give him the honor do not we have one abba so while we break the covenant of a saba knees on the ground pleading we need you baba Please just end this drama. Look at all the terror that we've been through. Yazanik knew. I know we seek you. We ain't believed you, but now we see you. My father, we need you. Cry. 